Is Will Smith, aka the Fresh Prince, the smartest rapper ever? For the last two plus decades, Will Smith has been known for his remarkable run as a Hollywood movie star. But his career started out in hip hop, backed up by his DJ, Jazzy Jeff, and the musically driven culture will always be a major part of his legacy. Therefore, for the duration of this video, I'm calling a Hollywood icon by his hip hop name, The Fresh Prince. Anyway, I recently read an interesting article published by the Los Angeles Times in 1988 about the resurgence of Jav Records, the independent label that signed Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince as a result of the explosive growing popularity of rap music. So there's, a, there's an eye-opening comment about the Fresh Prince at the end of the article, but I would like to read the entire piece, so stay with me to the end. I share what was revealed about the Fresh Prince but the entire piece is really an excellent informative read on the economic impact hip hop was having on the music industry at the time. I think you'll find the whole article interesting. A Rapping Big Year for Little Jive Records by Patrick Goldstein. Rap music is as much a part of the New York street culture as Yankees manager Bill Martin. So who would have guessed that the year's hottest rap label would have its headquarters not in the Big Apple, but in London? Called Jive Records, the label signed its first rap artist, Houdini, nearly six years ago. However, 1988 has been a banner year for Jive, which already had one top five black album on the Billboard charts with Kumo D's How You Like Me Now, and one on the way courtesy of Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, He's the DJ, I'm the Rapper. But what makes Jive's success so intriguing is that it marks the resurgence of independent record labels. One of the most refreshing sidelights of rap music's growing commercial appeal is that thanks to the music's outlaw image and street corner origins, it's been left in the hands of tiny New York-based independents like Tommy Boy, Profile, and Def Jam, which now have a chance to share the Hot 100 with the industry's corporate titans. Jab is distributed through industry giant RCA Records but enjoys considerable autonomy. It's a good fact that if any RCA big wits saw by all means necessary, the current album by Biggie Don Productions, they'll be diving under the boardroom table. Its cover features a group member brandishing a machine gun. Another new album by 22 year old rapper Too Short has language so filthy, Jav had to invent a fictional label, Dangerous Music, to release it. Jav actually began as a music publishing firm, which now represents such heavy metal heroes as Def Leppard, Poison, and Iron Maiden. But we saw so many parallels between rap and metal that we knew it was a good direction to go, explained Barry Weiss, Jav's New York-based marketing chief. Both metal and rap stimulate strong peer identification between fans and the group. Both use clothing as a badge of distinction, and both have a strong, rebellious image. Rap is really the music that speaks for black culture today. These songs are anecdotal chronicles of street life in late 80s urban America. The kid who would have gone the Motown route 15 or 20 years ago is the kid who's geared to a rap today. The dance music you see on the R&B charts just doesn't speak to teens anymore. They're full of anxiety, they have dreams that are not being fulfilled, and rap is the only music that captures that mood today. The major label Corporate Brass finally have gotten the message. Def Jam, home of LL Cool J, The Beastie Boys, and Public Enemy has been a big hit maker for CBS Records, its distributor. Warners just signed a pack with Cold Chillin' Records. Why MCA is distributing Uptown Records, home of Heavy D and the Boys. In hindsight, it's easy to see why white kids are equally enamored of rap. They like the slang, and they like the feeling of rebellion, said Weiss, and their parents hate it, which probably really helps. Weiss realizes that controversy usually boosts record sales. 
last year, for example, Kumo D's go see the doctor was, de was denounced as being sexually explicit. Jab simply dubbed it a safe sex record and marketed it with promotional condoms. Weiss also defended the shotgun cover pose on Boogie Down Productions' album, saying that group leader KRS-One was echoing a similar pose from a famous photo of black activist Malcolm X. We feel we should give our artists as much latitude as possible, Weiss said. KRS had a message he wanted to get across about violence, and he thought this would make people take notice. These guys are really bright and have a lot to say, so we figured we should be supportive. Now here's the part about the Fresh Prince. Weiss was particularly eager to erase the prevailing image of rappers as a posse of monster cable Latin rap fanatics. I remember the day we signed Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Their manager told me to ask them about their SAT scores. So I asked the Prince. And he told me he got a 1470. Wow, 1470. Hey, I'm not an SAT expert, but that sounds like a pretty high score. That's Ivy League territory, isn't it? I believe the Fresh Prince turned down an MIT scholarship in engineering to pursue his dream of becoming a rap star. According to collegesimply.com, a score of 1470 rocks. You're a top one percenter now. It places you in the top 98th percentile nationally out of the 1.7 million test takers of the SAT entrance exam. The score indicates you've done an exceptional job answering the questions on the math and the evidence-based reading and writing sections of the test. Now, the Fresh Prince took the SAT back in the mid-80s. With that said, his score of 1470 was in the top 2% of his graduating high school class nationwide. Keep in mind, a million plus students take the SAT each year. Now, let's be clear, SAT scores aren't a definitive measure of someone's intelligence. And there are several true MCs and rappers in hip hop who have impressive academic and professional backgrounds aside from the musical catalog. Fans often don't know this though, because labels, management, entourages, and the artists themselves have been known to go to great lengths to hide what should be inspiring information, all in the interest of perpetuating a stereotypical tough guy or gal image in order to sell music. But anyway, what do you think? Did you know the Fresh Prince was rolling like that back in high school? Soulful Charts? We got the receipts. Thanks for joining me. Peace.